Hey, welcome back. It's your whole setup. We're here with another dilemma. Stage three, clutch, kick the bucket. Stage one, kick the bucket. Stage two, looks like it kicked the bucket. So, um, no, it wasn't overstroked. So I think that uh, the Kennedy stage two and stage three basically are more like once they reach a certain amount of strokes, they are the fingers probably become weak and they warp, bend, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have all the symptoms of it being overstroked. Thing is, at this time, I made sure there is no way I could overstroke it. Remember me grinding in third gear? That was me not pressing the clutch all the way down to the wall. Okay, that's why I was grinding. The distance between the wall and my clutch pedal before it engages, you know, starts grabbing, is about that much, about half inch, probably less than half an inch. So there's there's no way I can overstroke it. So I, I'm thinking not a day. <laughs> it's not good for a daily driver. So I got some. I got a Porsche diaphragm now, uh, pressure plate. So. I don't expect this to happen again. The Porsche is for a little bit more, you know, more horsepower, but it's no longer turbo approved. So, uh, damn it. And I got a lot of parts for the turbo too. I've been slowly building up parts. So basically we're going to take the engine off again. And I'm not looking forward to that because it's a pain in the ass on these Type 4 engines. It's not like that Type 1 engine, about half an hour, hits down. This is like uh, two hours. If I really, 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 really go fast, I could probably drop it in maybe an hour, an hour and 20, something like that. Man, this thing needs a wash. I was going to wash it, but... I don't have a clutch anymore, <laughs> so I couldn't wash it. The whole idea was like, yeah, I'll get it to the wash, but it, it didn't want to engage the gears anymore. So, um, eee. type four engine, it's oil cooler right here. Uh, yeah, you can put it there if you want. You do have to section. Oh, you can't even see it. Oh, yeah, you can. You can see a cut right there and another cut right there. There's another cut right there. Another cut over there. I just pushed it a little bit over and it fits fine. But you have to install it at the last, at the very end. Um, you have to remove the studs, that stud, that stud, take it out and then it, it'll come right out. Real easy. Okay, carburetors are next. Gotta take those off. All right, I'm almost done. I just need to remove the nut right there. Uh, 17 millimeters, 17 millimeters right there. And the ones, two on the bottom and remove that nut to get the oil f uh, filter holder thing and bob get it out to the side and i should be able to pull it out oh fuck never mind pulley i need to remove the pulley damn it forget about that all right almost there uh this thing is so grimy it's not even funny so the threads are just caked with dirt um, just cake with dirt. It's just dirt. Man. Ha! Got it. Almost. Whew. Okay, highly recommend you pressure wash it before you do this shit. I gotta take the washers off. You know what? I'm actually gonna try to pull it out with, a, with the pulley still on it. It might work. It might not. Have a feeling it's not. But I don't want to keep taking that off every time I take off the engine. So I'm going to try it. If not, I'll just push it back in and then take it off. No biggie. Okay, so I'm just removing the oil filter bracket housing slash whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um... My English is not perfect, okay? Just be glad you can understand most of what I say. <laughs> it's not perfect. I am not an English, you know, student, I guess. Well, I'm still a student. Student of English language. 
I am an idiot when it comes to choosing the correct word. That's just the way it is. What do I speak? Spanish. It's Spanish. Y hablo puro español. Así como un indio bajado a tamborazos. All right. I'm going to make a fucking mess. <laughs> I'm ready with my little catcher thingy. Okay, it's not making any mess. That is good. Now, because I don't want to lose my nuts. <laughs> Sorry. Like I said, my English is not perfect. I don't want to lose my nuts. So I'm going to put them back to the whole bracket location because I just don't want to lose shit. And Lord knows I lose a lot of shit. I already have my, my trusty little jack right here. You can't even see it. Uh, trust me, there's a motorcycle jack stand. Or, no, hydraulic lift. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try to pull it up. It ain't coming out. So, it's probably too much weight on it. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, it came out. But now, uh, she's not clearing. It is not clearing. I'm gonna see if I can lower it and maybe the angle will allow me to continue to pull. See, dropping it lower, lower. Okay, now it's not dropping anymore. Okay, that means that it's 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 caught. Let's go back up. So unfortunately, it can't be done. Let me push it back. Just like that, it's breaking. I gotta take that shit off. Well, I'll put it on fast, whatever the fuck that's called. All right, she's out. Now we pull it out of the car. Hey. Oh. I just checked my throw out bearing. It's perfect. It's German. That's why. It's the big kind. Um, yeah, see that? It's, it's crooked. See that? See that angle? This is not good. This is no bueno. No bueno. Muy malo. I'm going to take that off and see what the hell is going on with the thing. See if the rivets are loose. Because once once I remove it, I'll know if the rivets are loose or, or what happened. But no more Kennedys. We're going Porsche. Keep it in the family. <laughs> okay, let's take these off. There's a lot of metal dust in here. And I hear, I hear metal, oh, these things broke off. These fingers, they broke off from here. Okay, clutch. Yeah, looks exactly the same. I'm gonna say that it's very little wear. Just gonna wait for 
the Porsche uh, pressure plate. Okay, now that I took it off, the crookedness kind of went away. Um, yeah, you can still see it's a little low on this side. Yeah, and it's a little higher on this side. Um, but yeah, the little thing broke from there. Because I heard a clang clang when I took it off. And I can't find the little thing. It's either stuck in here, behind here, or I don't know what, I don't know where it went. So I'm thinking those little fingers somehow wore out or just fatigued and uh, that's the end of that shit. So this stage two is, it's gonna go into the G file. Garbage. Okay, it took me a little while to find it, but I found it. There it is. That's a little thing that came from there. So I don't know if this was jamming inside the little fingers and causing it to go crooked. Um, I, I, I don't know. So I decided to move my fuel pump from here. As you remember, it used to be on the dock house over there. Oops, right about there. Not there anymore. So, this is a uh, high pressure, um, I don't remember, I think it's 22 bars? Yeah, it's 22 bar. Yeah, 22 bars. It'll be less cluttered up here, so when I'm working on it, that thing won't be in the way right here. It actually almost hits right here. So it should be easier to remove the doghouse and put it back without too much fussing around. My pressure plate is here. That's right, my clutch. Woohoo! Uh, I didn't know it was Sotch. It didn't say it was Sotch when I was purchasing it. But apparently Sotch is, I guess, the maker for Porsche uh, diaphragms. I don't know. I do not know. I guess so. So, yay! Okay, so... It, uh, it looks like a standard clutch. Pressure plate thing. So I'm going to go ahead. I have, oh, I, I got another disc. I got a new disc because the other one might be a little worn already. So I'm going to switch it out to a new disc. This is not looking very promising though. This is an old clutch that I used to run. This was standard uh, on my 1600. And I, I can't really see much difference between this guy and this guy. The fingers are about the same thickness. Um... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I labeled it good. You can barely read it, but it's still there. Uh, never had any problems with this one. This was smooth engagement, but this one couldn't hold blue. That engine, couldn't. this thing couldn't hold it, but then that guy was making 120, and my green car is only making 110, more or less, at the flywheel so this porsche might identical to this crap so it might not be able to hold it oh this is not looking promising oh what the fuck i'm gonna put it on okay we might have a problem we might not um i already tried three different discs um and um i, I still have okay this this side right here is lower or further that way this one's further out. Okay, all three of them did that. So I just put the, the new one back in. So don't know if this is gonna give me a shimmy, you know? Hopefully not. She's in, but like always, she just doesn't wanna go in and seat. I mean, it's in, but it's not seated. So I'm having to spin the flywheel and see if that takes care of the problem. So I don't want to bore you with this. So moving on, completely bolted in. So I already tested my, my clutch pedal and it's actually about perfect. So I'm gonna leave it right where it is. Uh, normally I would adjust it, but no adjustment necessary. It just fit perfectly. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put it all together now. I got the hard part already done. I have to, you know, raise the motor, put the stupid bolt on those intakes. And that one, you know, the one in the middle. Did all that, that's all done. Got all the exhaust system in. So, see, we've got, we got the muffler, everything connected. So, 
that's done. That's the hard part. Everything else is kind of like, whoo, it's just, just a breeze. So it's running, new clutch, pressure plate, Porsche. It still has a shimmy. So there's no other thing than the, the flywheel is warped. So I need a, next time I take it off, take it off and I'll take it to the machine shop so they get <sighs> flattened. <laughs> flattened because it's warped. Machined. Because that's the other word I didn't use. Okay, very, very different. It's not gonna hold it. This is not gonna hold the, the clutch. It's not gonna hold it. It's too much power. Now, it spins, and then it grabs. The engine was not grabbing. Clutch wasn't grabbing. It's too much power. Oh man, I'm gonna have to do this again? Yeah, we're gonna have to do this again. So that Porsche style clutch is for very small engines probably 1600s. Let me see if I can break it. Oh, I spun it. I just gave it and it broke loose. It broke loose. Okay, we're back from our little ride. Actually, that was actually, the last clip was actually like a, like a week old. The uh, Porsche style diaphragm uh, pressure plate, it's, it's not slipping anymore. It grabs just like the Kennedy. Um, very, very surprised. The Kennedy stage one, I mean. It, it grabs like that, all four gears. It just, it grabs it, it grabs it. No more slipping. Um, you saw it slipping in second gear and, and third gear. And and what ended up happening is I beat the leaf and shit out of it, okay? Um, I had a brand new disc. It's a darkened clutch, or darkened clutch disc. And basically, it it uh, it's designed to slip get hot and then it grabs okay um that basically trying to save your transmission so your gears don't take a beating when you're shifting gears that's what it's for so uh, i have a brand spanking new one in there and what i'm thinking is that the disc and the pressure plate and the flywheel you know they're not blended so unlike the kennedy's uh you know stage one which is 1700 pounds it doesn't really matter <laughs> it doesn't really matter it will Grab that disc like there's a no tomorrow, man. 1,700 pounds. Goes, so it just grabs the engine and it keeps it from slipping. Even when it's branch banking new and you're going on your first drive. This one, it just slipped and slipped for days and days and days and days. And it got to the point where I didn't give a fuck anymore. So what I ended up doing is uh, basically I would just drive it like I stole it. And I would not back off. I wouldn't back off. I didn't back off. It would go like like first gear. First gear was fine, right? Wah! Then go into second gear, and you know, because I'm revving the piss out of it, and then it'd be like, bah! And then it would grab. Then I would shift it to the next gear. Bah! That's even longer. Bah! Third gear. Bah! Then it would grab. <laughs> I did that. I did that. I actually did that because I didn't give a shit. So I did that with uh, for I did that for like, oh god, almost a week, and um, and every day that I did that, it was shorter. The 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 spin was shorter. I was like, you know, instead of being really long, it'd be like, ah, and then it would grab. I go, oh wow, there's an improvement there, and I kept doing that, and then now it's like, ah, ah, ah. it's like that. It's it's 
no more slippage on any gear. So I'm assuming that the clutch and the uh, flywheel and the pressure plate uh, Porsche style is all blended in 100% because it ain't slipping. It's zero slip. And it's, I'm just amazed. I was like, I was, I was so sad. I was so depressed. And, and I don't get depressed. I, I don't get depressed. I, I don't know what that is. No, wait. My mom died about a year and a half ago. Okay, I know what that is. But normally, I, I, I don't, I, I just don't go to those emotions. It's just not me. Anyways, so <laughs> that's the way God made me, okay? I, I, it's not my problem. So basically, um, I was sad about that. Okay, so maybe I did get depressed. Uh, sad about that, and, and and it just got better and better every day. And, and my 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 smile went from like that to mm, you know day by day. Mm, and now it's ear to ear, happy. No more slippage, so I don't have to take the motor off because I wasn't looking forward to that. Because that's a pain in the ass. Type four engine. Oh my god, it's a pain in the ass to do this. So. Uh, the moral of the whole story is this, and this is what I want you guys to take from this. Stage one is probably the best bet. It'll last you about five years. I almost got five years out of stage one. Um, the, 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 all that failed on that was the rivets. Rivets, okay? Stage two and stage three were just a matter of several months. Oddly enough, the stage three lasted about eight months of daily driving. And the stage two, which was the replacement for the stage three, thought I thought it would probably last maybe two years, three years. Nope, it only lasted like four months, and maybe less. No, four months, and it 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 has the same symptoms of being overstroked, and I did not overstroke that thing. I didn't. Mm -mm. It's impossible for me to overstroke it because the pedal goes down to the floor till I hit the floor. And to uh, disengage it, I have to, you know, to engage it and disengage it, it's like less than half an inch from the floor. You know, you move it back up about that much. It is impossible to over, overstroke it, okay? It can't be done. And I'm pretty sure my, my, my stage three was the same thing. It's just these things, I think those are very, very uh, thick diaphragms that when you overstroke them, not overstroke them, when you stroke doesn't sound right when you run it for such a long time you know daily driving it i think when you reach a certain amount of st strokes it, they, they 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 get weak and fail and um that's you know stage one i'm sorry stage two and stage three go stage one that's my recommendation go stage one uh, unless you're going to do a turbo then you know go stage two but be aware that you're probably going to have to replace that you know after maybe six months or so and um this is just part of the game. You want horsepower? It's going to cost you time and money. So uh, stage one. Uh, in retrospect, I should have gone stage one also. But I was so disappointed with uh, the Kennedy that I was so mad. And I just said, I'm going with the Porsche style. And the Porsche style, it feels almost stockish. Like like stockish. But it, 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 feels, it does have a little bit more pedal pressure than the stock one. But... Um, Mm, I went with that and and I was very disappointed and now I'm really happy because uh, it, it just took a while for it to blend in. And on unrelated note, um, developed a funky vibration. Didn't really know if it was clutch related because, you know, because I've been spinning my clutch too much or some shit like that. Figured maybe it just got bigger, the problem. Turns out my fan is starting to come apart. Look at that right there. Damn! She's coming apart, Captain. And then these little stampings are almost flush. And you go to areas where, like, well, let's see the opposite side. See right there, the opposite side right there? Okay, this side, these things are, like, protruding a lot. Like, so, yeah. So what we're going to do is just we're going to clamp it, and then we're just going to weld it. And uh, hopefully the vibration will go away. Um, I might have to dynamically balance it, but I'll know right away as soon as I get to 3,000 RPMs because uh, when I was getting to about 27, 2,800 RPMs, there was this vibration that was throughout the whole car, and it, it, it especially on the shifter, it's like there's a buzzing feel to it. Zzz, I was like, what the fuck? And it took me a while to figure it out. The fan's about to go out. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to go ahead. I already know the ones that came loose. So I already made a mark from here 
all the way up to here on this side and then on this side from here all the way up to here they came loose everything else is completely pressed in uh, the way it should be so at least i know you know put the clamp on weld it put the pan you know and just to move over and, and then eventually i'm going to get to these that where i don't need a i need i don't need a clamp so that's the reason i did that so that way i don't waste my time i'm not the best welder but um it's better than just those little stakings that they did. All they did is just stake them, like with a screwdriver, go bang. That's all they did. So this is a lot better than staking. I'm about halfway on this side. I'm gonna continue all the way around and uh, do the other side also. So what I'm doing, like I said, putting on that thing right there. So that removes the gap. All this right here had a huge gap right here. And look it, it's already welded and it's all the way down. No gaps whatsoever. She's all welded. Ah, that's fucking hot. All right, so I'm gonna hit it with the very light grinder or sander, you know, grinder, sander, whatever, disc. Uh, we're gonna do this side now. This side is, all these right here are loose up to here. These over here, they're fine. From here, it's all spreading open like I said. Here you can't see where I marked it because of the welding smoke, but. Ah, fuck, that's hot. Okay, moving on. Doing the other side. Okay, we got it all torqued down with the uh, Makita cologne. <laughs> this thing kicks ass, okay? Kicks freaking ass. Anyways, um, torque test channel. Anyways, um, that's uh, Loctite. We got Loctite on this fucker. So it's nice and tight, and I'm spinning it, and it actually is not bad at all. See, it's, it's perfectly, uh, when I bought this brand new, it had a wobble, like it was doing this shit. Okay, but it wasn't coming apart. Now that I used the clamp and then welded them, it, the wobble is no longer there. It's not perfect, but it, uh, you know, it was doing this when it was brand spanking new. And when it was opening up, it really was doing this, especially from like one side and then on this side, because one side was opening up on this side and the other side on the opposite side was opening up. So it was really wonky. Now it's not. So I'm going to put it back, see what happens. It's this, this is just a test. If there, I'm going to know right away if there's, if it's completely out of balance, because when I was hitting about 2,800 RPMs, this thing was vibrating like a motherfucker like I could feel it just just the buzz that just not normal so I'm gonna know right away if this thing is balanced or not you're gonna I'm gonna be able to feel it so so I very slowly gonna creep up you know my rpms and just you know go with the feel if it feels good I'll I'll go all the way up to to rev limiter so but till then I'm gonna go you know nice and slow all right we're gonna put this back on I'm not feeling any vibration. Uh, might have gotten lucky. I don't know, uh, but three thousand, no vibration. Let's go to four. No vibration. Five. No vibration. Okay. There is no vibration anymore throughout the whole entire RPM. The vibration is gone. 
I got lucky. I got lucky. Don't have to dynamically balance it. It's it's, it's good. Um, do I recommend you do something like this? No, no. Take it to a pro. Um, can you do it? Yeah, sure. Anybody can do it. Um, but like I said, I got lucky, man. I got lucky. I I had I had a feeling that I was gonna have to have it dynamically balanced. You know, take it off again, take it to the to the machine shop where they'll do a, a dynamically uh, balanced thing. And the weight, I think, has to be inside the, the the crevice. Like, if he puts it on the backside, it's going to rub on the doghouse. So that's going to be bad. So the weights would have to be inside the whole crevice, you know, where you can stick your hand in through the back, that crevice. Okay, that's where they're going to have to put the weights. So make sure you tell your machine shop uh, where to put the weights because he's not going to know, it, you know, how air-cooled uh, engines work. So Okay, I got to go. Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachas. See what it does! It grabbed! It grabbed! And I was going uphill! Well, over a bridge. <laughs> it, it doesn't slip, but I can tell that I'm right on the right edge, ragged edge of slipping. So I'm gonna say the Porsche style uh, pressure plate is basically good for about 80 horses, reliably, 80, not 110. Cause it's right on the edge. It's not slipping though.